these first four, we should pretty much be able to just rattle off. When it gets here is when it starts to get a little tricky, okay? So I've asked you to do two things, factorize and then to solve. So before we get to the solutions for each one, which I'm sure some of you already have, let's get the factorization and then we'll get the two answers for each one, okay? Good morning, Kevin. So who wants to stick their hand up? Give me the first factorization. Uh, for number one, any takers? Any takers? What are we going to get when we write this? Good morning. Anyone? Yeah, I'm in. Uh, X plus 4. X plus 4 and? X plus 7. X plus 7, perfect. And we chose 4 and 7 correctly because 4 and 7 add to this number and they multiply to this number. If you ever struggle to remember which one's which, like do I multiply this one? Or how do you remember which one's which? I tend to remember it like this. You've seen quite a lot of these questions. Like, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of them, right? This number along the end almost always is a big number. It's usually a very big number. Or at least, it's usually big compared to this guy, right? And so, it's easier to get big numbers by multiplying them versus adding. So that's how I remember this is usually the one that you multiply to. Also, in this particular example, there aren't many numbers that multiply to give you 11. In fact, there are only two, one and 11, at least whole numbers anyway. So you're like, if you're gonna try and find numbers that multiply to this, you quickly realize this is not working out, okay? So four and seven, they add to 11, they multiply to 28, that's perfect. You could go backwards, expand this out, and you get your original question, right? So I factorized. Now what do I do to actually solve the thing? What, is it? what am I gonna do to solve this? Yeah, okay. Okay, what am I going to multiply? X and X and X plus 7. Okay, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to expand, I'd go X times X, that'd give me the X squared. Um, X by 7 and X by 4, that'll be 4X, 7X, that'll give me 11, etc. That will expand, but I want to solve. I want the values that will make this true. Eric, do you want to help me out there? Um, you put it to zero, so X plus 4 is equal to zero, and X plus 7 is equal to zero. Good. So, in case you didn't catch, like, why would you even do that, right? <laughs> If you've got two numbers, right, this number and this number, and when you multiply them together, because there's a multiplication sign just hiding in there, right, we just don't write it, okay? If you've got two numbers and you multiply them together and you get zero, at least one of the numbers has to be zero, right? Like there's no pair of numbers where one of them isn't zero that will give you this result. So if you say, maybe let's take the first one, make that zero, if x plus four equals zero, then what will x be? Negative four. Negative 4, very good, right? That's what I get from here. Or alternatively, I said it could be the other one, right? So if it were this guy over here, if x plus 7 equals 0, then you're going to get negative 7. Okay? By the way, just a little, little side note before I get to your question, Dennis. I put the word or there. I think that's a good idea. I don't like putting a comma, because when you put a comma, it's like, well, what, what, what do you actually mean is the relationship between these? Do you mean or? Do you mean and? Do you mean, like, what's the combination between them? It's or, it's not and, because you can't be minus 4 and minus 7 at the same time, unless you're some weird Schrodinger's cat thing. Yeah. So, minus 4 or minus 7, those are our two solutions. Did you have a question? Yeah, so once one of them you've, like, made 0, the other one could ultimately be anything. But Correct, that's exactly right. In fact, let's just test out what happens. Like, for example, if I take this solution, right, x equals negative 4, when you pop it in here, this part becomes zero, right? This part does not. It becomes negative four plus seven, which is three, by my check, right? But zero times three, I don't care what this guy is. It could be zero times three, it could be zero times 50, it could be zero times a rock melon. It's still gonna give you zero at the end, right? So therefore, I'm happy it can be anything I like. There are my two solutions. All right, we did that a little slowly. Let's see if we can do the next ones a bit quicker. Number two. Again, give me the factorization and then we'll go straight to the answer. Someone who hasn't said anything yet. How are we going to factorize this guy? You're looking for a pair of numbers, right? Add to this, multiply to this. Yes? Okay, plus six and minus three. Is that going to work for us? Six take away three does give me three. Six times negative three does give me negative 18. So that's going to work. So I'm going to go x plus 6, x take 3. Okay, you happy with that? But that's just the factorization. What's the solution? I'm going to write straight there. x 
business. Yeah, I'm going to do that same, make these things equal to zero business, right? Another way of looking at it is I'm just going to take the opposite of these numbers here, right? So I'm going to go negative six from there or three from this guy. Are you happy with that? And again, one of the ways we can know always with equations is if these solutions are correct, you can pop them back into this original equation and it'll work. I should be able to do it with both of them, right? So for instance, let's take three. That's a smaller number, so it'll be easier to test, right? Let's see what happens if I give it a shot. Three squared is nine, plus three <coughs> times three, which is also nine. Nine plus nine is 18. You take away 18, and sure enough, you get zero. It satisfies the original equation. And you could test it out with negative six as well. It's going to check out, all right? Number three. Got another negative flying around there. Okay, so when we go for our factorization, pair of numbers adds to this, multiplies to this. Yeah, Kim. Um, negative 10, negative 10. X minus 2, X minus 10. Perfect. Okay, it's going to check out. You add them, you get minus 12, you multiply them, and the negatives cancel, don't they? Okay, so out of this, I just read off my solutions, right? What value makes this zero? Two. Two. And the value that makes this zero is 10. Okay, last easy one, before it starts to get a bit more involved. This guy here, what pair of numbers do I want? The, the pair of numbers I want are three and three. Three and three, right? Because if you do three plus three, you'll get six. And if you do three times three, you'll get nine. So I can write this in two different ways. I can write it as 3 and 3, that'll do it, right? Or alternatively, I can write that all in one go. I could say that's just x plus 3 squared. You, you happy with that? Okay. Being that there's only really one thing here that I can make 0, I only get one solution out of this, namely negative 3 minus 3. There we go. Okay. All right. So. That's getting your head back into the face of the quadratics you've been doing before. Um, because if you remember, let's put this in a different color here. Out the front here, these x squareds, right? How many x squareds have I got in each of these first four questions? I've just got the one, right? There's a one hiding in each question, okay? So because there's just one, we call these guys monic quadratics. Monic as in like, like a monocle, like someone's, or a monorail, or mono or anything. Yeah, single, right? But these guys are not monic, right? So we call them non-monic, very imaginative, isn't it? So how are we going to do these? I just got to look at these very briefly at the end of last Thursday's lesson. So if you can't remember it, or you've seen these before and you're like, okay, these freak me out a little bit, let me walk you through it again. <coughs> Question five. Okay, actually, let me just quickly get a show of hands. How many people have attempted five, six, or seven? Hands up straight? A decent number of you. Okay, good, hands down. Okay. When we do five, I'll just write out the question first. And if you're in the large number of people who haven't put their hand up yet, either because of time or you're just not sure how to start, follow along with me. I'm going to do this in a very similar way to how I did it before, okay? And I, I showed you this very briefly last Thursday. I again want a pair of numbers, right? But instead, instead of a pair of numbers that adds to this <coughs> and multiplies to this, I want a pair of numbers that adds to this, 13, and multiplies to this, the product of these two numbers. That's 12, okay? So I'm just gonna write that down on the side so you have an idea of what my thought process is. I want numbers that something plus something equals 13, and something times something equals 12, okay? So I've picked out an easy example for, the, for this first one. What's the pair of numbers that will satisfy this? 12 and one, right? That'll do it. 12 plus one, 12, Plus one, uh, so 12 times one, sorry. Okay, so it checks out. Now what do I do with those numbers, okay? When I go up to here, I'm gonna use 12 and one and break them apart, right? So this 13x is really made of a 12x and a 1x, okay? Now I've gotta look carefully how I write this. There's a couple of different ways I can write it. I'm going to write it like this, okay? I've put the 12x first, and I've put the 1x second. You'll see why I've done that in a second. If you accidentally did it the wrong way around, it's okay, all is not lost. You'll just run into a brick wall and realize you've got to come back here. Okay, I'll show you in a minute. Now that I do have it in the right order, I can see I have a pair of terms here, which I can factorize, 
and then I'll have a pair of terms here that if I've picked the numbers right, and you guys picked them, looks good to me, okay, it will also fit together with what we get at the beginning. So have a look at this guy. What can I factor out of this pair of terms? I can take out a 3 for both of these, and I can also take out an x for both of them, just the 1, right? So I'll write that 3x out the front, okay? Now what does that leave me with after I factorize it out? When I divide there, bless you, I get an x. And when I divide the 12x, I get a plus 4. Aha! Tick! That's how I know I've done it right, because that x plus 4 matches with this x plus 4 along the end. Okay? I'm just going to write one extra thing. See how, just like over here, I've got x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared. Really, there's a 1 hiding in all of those spots, okay? There's also a 1 hiding here. You see that? How many x plus 4s are there here? There's just one of them, okay? Now that I know there's just one of them, these two terms I can factorize again. You see how they both have that x plus 4 in there? Right? So I chuck that x plus 4 out the front. When I bring that out, what does that leave me with? There's a 3x there, and there's a plus 1 there. That's my factorization. Bam. Okay? So that was the hard part. We had to invest a lot more effort to get to this factorization versus these ones, right? That's because these ones are a little more complicated. But now that I've factorized, it works just like the other questions, right? I want either this thing to equal zero, that'll give me a solution, or I want this thing to equal zero. Either of those will give me an answer that works, okay? So from the first one, what value is gonna do that? Negative four. This one's going to give me a fraction. This is a little bit messier, right? But you can see what I need to do. If you struggle to do it in your head at the moment, that's all right. If I would just gave you that as the question, what would I do? I guess I'd take that one over the other side. That would give me this. You happy with that? And then what do I need to do to solve? I divide both sides by three, right? Which gives me minus one third. Okay, so that's my other solution. Or minus a third. Okay.